Hey there guys, how's it going? I've got a bit of a mixed video for you today, so uh, we'll see how this one goes. Probably a bit chaotic, but there you have it. We're going to do some EAA tonight, as I'm going to be testing out some parts that I've been designing to solve a seemingly never-ending problem on the Rasa 11. Those familiar rings that you see in your sub-exposures, uh, reflected light, getting around in there and somehow finding its way back up to the camera causing shadows and then bright rings and dark rings and uh, it's a nightmare you know what I mean it's something that the end user shouldn't have to be dealing with but here here we are um, now this all got off to a start really by a kind chap by the name of Jeff getting in contact with me and telling me how he'd solved the problem on his Rasa 11 using a, a part that he purchased from Astro Hue Tech a kind of a camera adapter and filter draw system that he then created a 3d printed Effectively like a sleeve for uh, that he was able to flock the inside with with some really heavy flocking material and For him it worked perfectly and he got rid of all the reflections in his system You know he provided some uh, some flats and things like that and we talked back and forth a bit But what he did do anyway is urge me to kind of finally get on with it and solve the problem for myself so previously as some of you might have seen in my Raster 11 kind of reveal video where I showed that I'd actually got that scope um, I detailed some of the struggles that I'd had getting to the point where I could actually even calibrate my data even though some of the rings still were there effectively. Um, they calibrated out and I was happy to settle at that at the point because I just wanted to use the telescope but Jeff was quite right I really should have uh, <laughs> you know pressed on and got it solved like I think I have now. We're going to test it tonight as I said with some EAA. But I went through no less than 17 revisions of parts along the way. Uh, this is just a few of them. And I eventually settled upon a design which I'm going to share with you in a moment. But I think let's jump over and I'm going to show you some of the parts physically. Well, I have to be honest, this has been a real struggle this past week. I've done a lot of testing on flats and little bits of clay sky when I could. This was my initial design that I came up with, kind of a uh, semi-conical reducing baffle system where one part fits into the lens group and this sits on top. And uh, the whole thing is held in place just by friction against the Bada UFC. It worked a bit, but it wasn't perfect. So I started refining my designs a little bit more. Came up with this kind of system here with some actual flat knife edged baffles if you like if you can see those inside angled gradually you know decreasing in size as they head up towards the filter glass that kind of thing still better but not quite good enough then i came up with another <laughs> kind of system with a little bit of a heavier reduction on the lens group leading into a set of downwards facing if you can see those knife edge baffles that i uh, created for a kind of an all-in-one stacked reduction system this one was perhaps one of the most promising but um, it certainly didn't stop there I um, there's even more than this would you believe but <laughs> it took a lot of time and I've eventually came up with a system that I think works the absolute best based on just really looking down the end of the scope and using a torch and i'll show you what i'm talking about next so after much 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 experimentation as you can probably see i came up eventually with this really simple looking design and it is effectively if we can just view it from the side a steady single conical reduction uh and this as it turns out is the darkest of them all. All right, guys, so here we are, just looking down the end of the raster. Apologies for any dodgy camera work, but I'm doing my absolute best for you. Hopefully you can see, as we move the, the kind of torch around and shine down the end of the scope, the darkest element in there is the conical baffle that I've printed. Uh, and this one I've actually tested just very briefly using some flats and stuff, and it appears to be the darkest of them all. It's darker than any other element inside the Rasa. Um, so it certainly shouldn't be casting any odd reflections or anything like that. And um, hopefully with this admittedly shoddy camera work, you can see what I'm talking about. Um, I did have a bit of a mishap though towards the end of testing. So I'm hoping that tonight's EAA session is going to uh, let me really finish testing this thing 
finally, and I'll talk to you about the mishap now as well. All right then, so I mentioned I'd made a little bit of a mock-up during testing, and I, I wasn't joking. <laughs> this is my flat panel, so it's just an A3 tracing panel that I've been using really for a couple of years now. Actually worked well, uh, wasn't the best in terms of uniformity, but it worked. However, uh, in <laughs> a bit of a rush one night, it took a tumble, and as you can see, it's now broken, no longer safe to use, even if it would be able to be fixed. Uh, I'd be too worried about a short circuit or something. So, I, uh, thanks to your support, I was able to go straight out and get myself a replacement, which I'm gonna show you now. This thing's an A3, uh, pretty decent sized panel. This one that I went for to replace it is A2. It's massive. It really is huge. So let's just show you why this has actually turned out to be a bit of a happy accident. So uh, this particular panel has way, way, way better uniformity than any panel I've ever seen. In fact, it does look to the eye almost perfectly uniform. Even as we go up in brightness, no real hot spots are forming or anything like that. I don't know how well it's gonna come across for you on camera, but hopefully you can just see, sort of, and take my word for it, but you know, that is a really nice uniform panel. And I am dead impressed and kind of glad I dropped the other one at this point. I should have had that kind of unit long ago. So uh, every cloud's got a silver lining. <laughs> well guys, with no further ado, let's get the roof rolled off this place and test out if this thing actually truly works. The flats looked good, like I said, but the real test is, does it calibrate a light well? Um, I don't know. We're gonna find out together and I will still post the result even if I'm completely wrong and uh, end up looking a bit stupid. Because that's what it's like. You can't always get things right with astronomy. Um, let's get on with it. been out and set up the flat panel and then the telescope and it looks really good on these sharp cap flats tonight i'm going to be using nina for most of the telescope control you know plate solving to objects and things like that as well as autofocus runs every now and again uh but in between all of that uh mainly it's just going to be sharp cap live stacking stuff so i'm going to take a flat in sharp cap so it can use this and uh, we'll just see exactly how it turns out now it says this gram status is okay but it's a little bit dimmer than I like to have uh, flats, generally speaking, more around the 50% mark. And uh, Jeff himself advises a little bit higher too for his own flats. Um, but in my case, let's just see if I just pump up the gain ever so slightly. Getting it a touch closer. I reckon 45 milliseconds or so. Let's see how this turns out. If it's slightly too hot. So we're gonna try 40 milliseconds, I think. Not 400, <laughs> about 40 milliseconds, and yeah, that's looking pretty good. This particular white peak here, uh, representing like the, the convergence point of all the colors, if you will, is good. Nothing's getting clipped, none of these green pixels off the right, none of the red or blue off the left, so uh, should be a nice flat. Let's just double check I've got enough, so 20, and uh, Let's start capturing. I'm going to allow it to keep the individual flat frame files as well. Uh, just in case I want to use them at a later date on another project before I take the camera off or anything like that. I'll change filters. You can always just delete them later on if I don't need them. And uh, yeah, looking promising guys. It is looking promising. I'm going to come to you in a moment once this is all finished and uh, we can get a target selected and get going, get this show on the road. Well, we're a few minutes on now, uh, actually six total minutes of 30 second subs have been stacked 
on this region and it looks pretty cool but there is clearly an issue with the flats what it looks like you can see now that the image has developed a little bit more uh, depth to it you can now pick out that there's some bright bands running across the frame as you can see there's one right there seemingly one right there and potentially one more at the bottom uh this isn't something to do with the part that I've created. I've already identified what it is actually just a moment ago. And it appears that the flat panel that I've just bought, um, well, two things have gone wrong. So let's jump into the first one. So the flat panel, I think it has an element of flicker when used at low brightnesses. Uh, that's not perceivable by eye, but certainly is at low exposures on a camera. So I was taking these flats at uh 40 milliseconds if memory is serving um i probably need to actually drop the gain and take a longer flat so that, that flicker can be averaged out across the frame and then with a smooth flat rather than actually capturing um mid flicker so if we just go through a few of these flats that um sharp gap captured that one looks okay the next one very obvious banding as you can see going on nothing to do with the camera this is the panel you see. I know this camera very well and it's been working fine for ages. Um, but as you can see, I've got banding going across differently every frame. Now I also had a little bit of a bug happen on Sharp Gap's automatic flats too, which I'm going to show you in just a second also. So you can see some of these were so severely illuminated at the bottom and less illuminated at the top that it actually threw the flat completely off in that case. Even though it's still working pretty well, just due to how well averaging seems to work for these things it's not perfect so i think my parts worked the flats from uh, the panel not yet perfect i need to learn the panel a little bit more we're going to have another go in just a moment and see if i can solve this issue uh, but the flat bias when it actually started taking those bias frames it accidentally recorded a couple more actual flats by the look of things so if we just open this up that is not a bias. That's a flat. I've taken another look at the next one. That's another flat. And I think, yeah, now we're actually starting to get onto the bias frame. Well, fortunately, it looks like those longer flats have really evened things out and uh, it's done the job. We're only, what, two minutes in now to this stack and we can already see, I think, if I just stretch it a little bit more aggressively, perhaps. There's no real evidence of any of that banding occurring because we just take a little bit of a look at the, uh, the actual flats themselves. So those are the bias. Uh, the flats, the later session, so 11.48, the second set that I took, a uh, longer exposure. Let's just take a look at these. Seemingly, I've lost all of that kind of ripple effect that was happening. I uh, think I identified there was, yeah, there was a couple. Again, a bit brighter towards the bottom, so there is still some degree of... Uh, you know, like that rolling shutter effect um, where you see footage of a car or something like that and it looks like the, the wheel rims almost stop and then return. Where the refresh of wherever you're looking at is nearly matching the um, the exposure or is matching it in some de degree of division. Um, so longer, even longer flats would be better in this case due to the nature of that particular flat panel. But that's what it's all about, you know, identifying issues and, and learning your gear, learning to work with it. So I reckon the next time I take flats in anger and, uh, you know, really want to use some, I think I'm probably going to take more, maybe around about 50 flats or something so it can really average everything out. Longer, if I can, if I can somehow dim the panel, maybe use the back side of it. They tend to be a little bit dimmer than the front. Um, that could do it just in one, actually. Don't really want to use any diffusing material. Uh, I've found that that can sometimes cause more problems than it fixes in some cases. Uh, but yeah, those look pretty good now. Certainly a far cry from what we were looking at just, you know, a few moments ago with the uh, the much shorter 40 millisecond exposure flats where there's that really clear evidence of banding, which we're actually seeing in our images. So uh, yeah, on the actual shot itself though, 
looks really good. So those longer flats seem to have done the job. And I think most importantly of all, there's zero, and I mean zero, really visible ringing. You know, those Rasa rings are done. Quelled them, I think. So <laughs> there's always something to uh, to celebrate. That is a major victory. Oh, I'm so relaxed now. I just uh, feel like a weight's been taken off my shoulders. Um, good times. Let's let this stack up a little bit and uh, pick a different target. Keep testing it, different pointing angles, and uh, see if we can identify any more issues that need solving. But it's looking really good for now, I would say. Well guys, we're about 17 and a half minutes into this second target now, just, you know, part of the Veil Nebula, as you can see. And it's looking good. For just a UVI cut filter, it's surprising because this is one of those targets where it really would be more suitable to shoot it with a, you know, a traditional narrowband approach or a dual narrowband, you know, with using a one-shot colour camera. But still, all the same, the Rasa uh, excels, it performs extremely well now, and um, again, you know, with a reasonably deep integration and a strong stretch, zero evidence of, uh, of halos is left over and, uh, you know, rings and donuts and things like that. So it's looking super promising. And I think I can pull this whole thing behind me and say that that's solved. And uh, just continue having a little bit more fun tonight and leave it at that, ready for the next actual, uh, you know, new moon phase. Hopefully when we're going to get some more clear skies and more experimentation to be done. So... I've gone on and on, I realise, way too long, and I'm going to leave you at that. Just going to say, as always, thank you. And on heart, always say it, always mean it. Thank you, I appreciate all your support out there, everybody, right from Patreon supporters, you know, YouTube memberships, people using my affiliate links, again, another huge help, right down to people just watching the videos and clicking like. It all makes a difference, it all adds up, and it's thanks to you that I'm able to do this. So thank you. And with that, quite a happy note to finish on. Uh, gonna leave it. So I'll see you in the next video. Hopefully you enjoyed this one and maybe enjoyed seeing a bit of live fault finding. And if not, then it's probably back to normal stuff for the next one anyway. So uh, yeah, until then, close guys.